So I will talk to you today about a product that is still looking for its first billion customers and of which I, I am the chief engineer. A uh, very bad one, I must say, if I uh, gather the comments I got. So I hope I will get a few more comments from you today and hopefully some uh, contribution as well. Uh, so uh, Antoine did a very great in introduction for me by saying the Hoshin is one of the most undervalued processes. I, I fully agree with this. So I will talk to you about Hoshin, what it is, quickly, because a real explanation of Hoshin would take much longer and uh, how we could support the Hoshin process with IT, but remaining very modest for the IT part, because in the end, the Hoshin content is not yet done uh, by artificial intelligence. That may be a next step. Uh, so, uh, as was just said, it's the third time uh, I talk at each even Lean IT Summit. So I talked at the second, the fourth, and the sixth. Uh, it's not yet a commitment for the eighth, we'll see later. Um, and uh, the first time was relatively easy because what did I do? I took all the, let's say, standard concept of Toyota production system that we are using every day at Toyota. And I said for each of them, but this is what it could mean for, for IT. And the more I looked at the concepts, I have a list of around 100 concepts of TPS with Japanese names, but doesn't matter, could be English or French names. And uh, every time I try, I find some application in IT. And of course, as you know by now, uh, you can do the same with uh, startups, government, healthcare, any subject you may imagine, and you will be able to apply those concepts. So this is why the discussions like we sometimes have, you know, uh, we did Lean IT, then we will do Agile, or the contrary, or next step is DevOps. No, Le what we call, or we don't call Lean IT, but uh, the principles of, uh, of Toyota Way and Toyota production systems, Basically, I would almost say they will be there forever. Yeah? So, so there won't be a, a new fad in uh, five years. So that those who really do lean IT seriously, they will just continue to do it, what, whatever the environment is. So th this is my belief. Um, so the second time I spoke, I spoke about One Piece Flow. Uh, if I judge from the views on YouTube, it was a much less successful presentation. Uh, and my reflection on this, is that, well, first of all, it was only about one part of it, but this part, uh, I couldn't show any good examples. Uh, so you don't like this. Yeah? You like to see examples, you like to see that things have practiced what they say and so on. Uh, by now, the great thing, and you saw it yesterday with Jess, is that really you, you have the examples. I mean, people understand now that it makes sense to, to put things to production every few seconds. And basically, in Toyota production system, this is what we call small lots. Yeah? We have to, to come to smaller and smaller lots. And while I struggled to understand at first what the people in production meant by that, when I finally saw how it works in IT, I understood better what it is in production. And I'm fortunate enough to go to EPKM, or European Production Kaizen meetings, uh, which are happening every three months in one of our plants, and I would never miss this. So I go to every time I can, but of course, sometimes I try to have also some of my team to go because it's very selfish to get all the knowledge myself, but it's unbelievable what you can learn by going to the Gamba and seeing uh, what workers in plants can achieve. It's very uh, unpleasant sometimes for, for me and my team when I go back and I say, come on, guys, yeah? you have those uh, university degrees and, and the workers here can achieve much more. Yeah, we really have to do better together. Um, so uh, I work uh, in Brussels at the head office of Toyota Motor Europe, uh, which uh, covers uh, 53 uh, markets. So Europe is a bit bigger than Europe. We have markets like Kazakhstan or Kyrgyzstan is as part of the European organization. Um, and we have also nine factories uh, for cars, engines, transmissions that are based in Europe. So around two thirds of the cars that we uh, sell in Europe are also built in Europe. And we also export some cars to North America or other countries. Uh, you may have seen recently the campaign for the Toyota CHR, which is a pretty different car to, a car to what we have uh, 
sold before. So you can see some uh, interesting examples of uh, chief engineer's uh, role in a car. So today I will talk about briefly about what is the Hoshin definition and the historical context and uh, what is the positioning in the cultural context, which is very important. And I've seen some multicultural audience here uh, and in the Lean context. And then uh, I will move to the main part of this presentation, which is the e-Hoshin application. So like we have an e-Kanban application at Toyota because the, the physical Kanban could not be moved between factories in different regions, uh, or we, we had to, to move to a next step there. Also for the Hoshin, I think that uh, IT can give at least some support to, to the process. Uh, so I have started also as part of uh, some research I do uh, with the University of Strasbourg uh, to, to model a theoretical process for the Hoshin uh, within the organization and then apply it practically with a small open source application. And we have iterated twice on this uh, at Toyota Motor Europe IT department. And uh, you will see that you will have the opportunity to, to use it uh, by yourselves also if you wish to. Uh, and this is why at the end I will show the Ihoshin application and uh, kindly request your contribution. So what is Hoshin? Uh, most of you may not read the, the Japanese characters, even though I know that Antoine does, so at least uh, there will be one, at least. Uh, so Hoshin Kanri is compass management. So this is the compass, uh, this is the direction, and this is actually the needle. And uh, this part of the, of the character, the Chinese character, is, is the metal of which the needle is made. So basically, the Hoshin is the part that will give us the, the direction that we want to go towards. And uh, management, Kanri uh, in Japanese, well, actually, Guanli in Chinese, which is exactly the same word. Uh, you can see here the bamboo, which was used by the officials to write. Uh, and... Uh, uh, this is uh, what, what means management, because of course to just have the compass but not being able to manage to get there is also not good enough. Now, uh, I looked at uh, many articles and books about Hoshin Kanri. Now I took this one, it was a bit heavy to transport, but this is a book of 1988 uh, by uh, Akao Yoji-san. Uh, and it's still uh, one of the best, if not the best, reference on Hoshin Kanri. And I was totally surprised when I read this myself uh, that uh, I saw only some part of it. But to understand it in the historical perspective and how in the, 15, in the 50s uh, the Hoshin uh, process was emerging in Japan, by the way, not first at Toyota, and at the same time, you had Peter Drucker publishing his book on, on management in 1954 and talking about management by objectives and how those two things evolved in parallel uh, and with some interesting differences. Uh, all the history of this is explained here. Now, it's not a very easy book to read, surely not in Japanese, but this is the English translation, uh, also not in English. However, it's really rewarding to do it and to understand the link with the total quality management in the company. Uh, because um, it's by seeing where, where you have quality issues and so on that you can focus on items that will actually support you to have better quality and hence better cost, better satisfied customers. Uh, so this link is sometimes totally forgotten by people who, who work on this. Now, uh, because I knew this presentation would evolve and change totally during this uh, Lean IT Summit, I put very simple slides with not too much text on it. <laughs> so uh, the Hoshin Kanri is really to do the right things. It's very simple to remember. So you have a place where you want to go very far in the future, and you may have quite a few obstacles on the way to get there, but you should never forget uh, that you want to go there. And maybe the obstacles will uh, oblige you to, to go this way and then that way, but you should keep the end in mind. Now, sometimes Hoshin is done on a yearly basis and people forget uh, that it is sometimes multi-year objectives that you have to pursue, so that you should also never forget. 
but for that we have uh, mid-term plans, long-term plans, and so on. Uh, for environmental protection, I heard about uh, lean uh, and green IT. Um, we have a 2050 plan, and I really like to, to be in a company where we can work about a, a 2050 plan and where we really know every year what we want to achieve to get to the result in 2050. And the Mirai, the hydrogen fuel cell car I showed you at the beginning, is, is part of that plan. So, put Hoshin in the cultural context. Uh, that is for me very important because having to, to lead a multicultural team uh, in multiple countries in Europe, uh, this is quite relevant also to apply the Hoshin in the right way. So, uh, maybe some of you have read this book of Erin Meyer called The Culture Map. Um, she has defined uh, eight dimensions uh, to compare cultures. But the interesting thing uh, is that uh, she has uh, positioned cultures on a scale for each of these dimensions and relative to each other. I will take a simple example, which is the number eight one on this slide, scheduling. Uh, you all know the stereotypes of uh, various countries. I mean, if you're German, you will be on time for meetings. If you're French, you will be a few minutes late. If you're Japanese, you will probably be uh, one quarter before or one hour before the meeting. You will already be there. And if you're exactly on time, you will be considered late. Uh, so probably if you're Japanese, the Germans come a bit late to meetings. But if you're German, maybe it's the French that come a bit late. And if you are French, maybe it's uh, other, other cultures uh, that come late. So if, if you position the various cultures like this, you can work much better in a multicultural team because you will say, oh yeah, this guy is like this, so relatively to that guy, he is actually there, while for me, he's actually here. And, and that, that really helps. And what is the link with the Hoshin is that uh, when I have to explain Hoshin to people in my team, I have people in the, in the Nordic countries, maybe, who are in a very collaborative environment. Uh, so they will directly participate to the Hoshin creation by themselves. But I have a team uh, in another country uh, which is pretty hierarchical and top-down, uh, which you can see under number four, leading. Uh, there, if I'm the boss of the team, I will say, and now we'll do the Hoshin together, and please participate all to this process. And then everybody participates to the process. If I forgot to say that, I got no input at all at the end from that team. Yeah? And that's, of course, not acceptable, because they are also very good, and they have many things to say. But they would say it only if the boss asked them to say it. Yeah? So uh, you can imagine, if you're IT guys, you would have a few if then else at the beginning of your program, and you would say, OK, if I am in a hierarchical culture, then first I will explain. Or also persuading the number three. Uh, we see that, for example, in France, it's very important to explain first the theory of what uh, you will implement, uh, and then you start with the practical examples. But probably in the USA, you will do the contrary. You, you will start by showing an example, and from there, you, you will derive the, the theory, and you will explain the theory at the end. Uh, if you don't know about this, and, and in the book, there are some funny examples of uh, American guys who goes to a German board, and they start with a concrete example, and then they are thrown out of the meeting before they can explain the theory, <laughs> because that's the order in which they do that. Yeah. So again, in the, in the Hoshin context, be, be mindful of these differences, because in the end, the essence of what we want to do is the same. But the way to explain and to, to accompany the process may be very different. So I took a new definition of Lean IT. That's what <laughs> may be very temporary, but I call it do the right things right. So you could do Scrum. Uh, you could have uh, many Scrum teams uh, with Scrum masters uh, everywhere uh, and product owners, but frankly, if they do the wrong things, it still won't bring you much further. Yeah? So this is why the, the Hoshin is so important. Uh, when thanks to the Force I Lean IT Summit, where Jeff Sutherland was talking in this room, I, I talked to him and I invited him to come to Toyota in Brussels, which he did, uh, and, and we had a discussion. And, 
And he told me also that he saw many companies just applying Scrum to the wrong thing. So he totally agreed with me that, that the Hoshin was, was a key thing that companies needed to have, but maybe it's not emphasized enough. So I would encourage you to think about what your Scrum teams are doing. And are they really doing the right things for the company? Do you have the framework in your company to decide that what they are doing are the, are the right things? And then we mapped, uh, because we have a situation that none of you have, of course, is we have to explain that Scrum, which is based on the Toyota production system, we have to explain it to Toyota people who don't use the terminology of Scrum. So we have to say, oh yeah, this is actually a PDCA, or this is Kaizen, uh, this is just in time, and so on. But in the end, we can find all these various ingredients, and it's not by chance, because Jeff took inspiration from Toyota. Now, what I've put on the right, uh, maybe the acronym is not obvious for all, so the uh, GG is the Genshi Genbutsu, I say go to the place of the action, really try to understand uh, the, the work of your customers, what they really need, and that's of course what Google just explained, uh, if you put your, your system already in a kind of production and have real users, of course it's always much better. Uh, and JKK, which is uh, Jikotei Kanketsu, the built-in quality with ownership, uh, which is uh, a way to implement the Jidoka pillar uh, of, the, of the Toyota production system. And it was said yesterday that maybe the quality aspects are not handled enough in the Scrum framework. Okay, there could be debate about that, but definitely for us this is, this is fundamental. So, so you can see uh, all these things, but again, I wanted to say this, but this is not the, the main part of my presentation, which focuses on Hoshin today. So now I will move to the eHoshin application. So the theoretical model, and again, I, I wrote some uh, programs in Python and got some help, and as you can imagine, maybe none of you is CIO, but many of you have CIOs. Uh, I don't know if you imagine your CIO trying to write programs, probably is the worst of the whole team. So that is uh, probably the situation I was, I was in for this. Uh, but we have simulated a Hoshin generation process. Of course, I'm focusing here on the part where you establish the Hoshin, let's say for the next year in your company. Uh, after it's established, the activities have to be done. You are in the do phase and you have to follow up and so on. So I will not talk about that part. I will talk about the collaborative part where you and your team together discuss about what are the most important things to work on for the, for the coming year. So what the theoretical model did is it considered every member of your organization as agent and uh, those agents have a seniority, uh, they have a, a level of skills and you can imagine that people with, on one hand, some seniority, but more importantly, with very high skills, are more likely to see their items retained uh, in the Hoshin uh, that will be proposed. And then we make iterations, so Nemawashi, where we look at the items that were proposed by a group and we keep the best ones uh, in, a, in a discussion uh, with the management, and then we go to the next step. And maybe somebody who has a great idea at the lowest level in IT uh, will have uh, his or her idea taken in the final Hoshin because it will be strong enough to go up the levels uh, of the spiraling in the Hoshin. And what we just show on the result of this simple simulation uh, is that if you have strong employees, uh, sorry, I will start with weak employees. Uh, so the red line and the blue line uh, if the employees are weak, but top management is good, for example, they have a new team, they want to teach them lean and so on, uh, then the top management would better seed the Hoshin process with a few items and then ask the opinion of the employees. And you will have a difference. If the employees propose by themselves, and it's quite intuitive because they are relatively weak, uh, the items won't be retained, you will have more iteration until you can converge to something relatively acceptable. But now if you look at the yellow and green lines, uh, the interesting thing is they are, they are the same actually. That means that if your employees have been trained, they are strong. You are almost in a, in a self-organized environment. 
And basically, you don't need your top management. Yeah? So like was said yesterday, the top management can be replaced by some robot uh, because each of the, of the employees will be able to, to propose uh, the, the right items by themselves. And, uh, and the right list of items will emerge. So I'm not saying by that that the top management becomes useless, but the role of the top management is totally changing. It is then to make sure that this kind of culture uh, can be sustained in the company and that all the employees will be coached, will be strong and so on. Uh, because even if they are strong today, they may be weak in 10 years because some strong people have left and so on. So it's a shift of role in top management. So now, and sorry, the arrows are not positioned very well on the left part. What we did in IT, and that was quite frustrating for me because I learned the theory of Hoshin and the theory says you need to do the catch ball. So you need to catch the ball of people at all levels in your organization. But practically, how did we do? Well, in January every year, our fiscal year starts in April, so we have January, February, and March to create a very good Hoshin for the next year. And we did that essentially with top management of IT. We told our employees, please give us ideas if you have any. And that was it. And of course, they didn't give us ideas because if you ask this only once and people don't really know what will happen, they just don't participate. So I was always thinking about a tool that would help the employees to actually participate. And so uh, from 2016, uh, we have used this application to involve all the members of IT. Now, it's also interesting to see if uh, it's different in an IT department from other departments. Because I talk to our HR colleagues, and because they are used to talk to people rather than sitting in front of, com of computers, well, they actually practice the catch ball process by having many meetings with each other and so on. And probably the IT guys, if they have an application, they will say something. If not, they will just continue to work on their very hard daily job. So also in the context of an IT department, this has a, a lot of sense. So uh, the application, and again, yeah, I take all uh, responsibility because I'm the chief engineer, so it's by far not perfect. Uh, but uh, we, we have enabled people to enter items like deliver value in IT, or reduce IS fixed costs, nothing extremely original. But then we showed the, the references uh, to a number of Hoshin. Naturally, but it was in 16. Uh, so you will, uh, you will have the Hoshin of the previous year. There are things you achieved, tick in the box. There are things that are carry over because you couldn't finish, so they will move to the Hoshin of next year. So this is one reference. Then as European IT, we have the Hoshin of the global IT as a reference. Uh, we have to implement some things that we want to do globally, but we have things we want to do regionally, and there the reference uh, will be the regional uh, Hoshin of Toyota. Then not only IT, but what do we want to achieve with the region? So with those three inputs, uh, we will choose items, and the color codes uh, here will show the link with the, with the various items. Uh, and uh, we will show so on to see the participation, yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this is the layout. Uh, now the first year, we didn't force people to participate. Uh, we said it's not mandatory, but if you want to have a contribution, or if some people say, oh, we always do the wrong things here, well, this is the opportunity to make sure that we do the right things. Yeah? So we had spontaneously 54% uh, of people participating to, to this activity, which means 46% didn't, of course. But if somebody just connects to the application and does nothing, OK, I don't want to force them. I want them to see, oh, my neighbor said he would like to do this. And that became really an item we work on. And I didn't. So maybe next year, I will try to participate. And uh, we have by here the. 10 or 11 examples we had in, in the Hoshin that year. Uh, and we see the number of comments that people made. Of course, you can imagine an item called people development and motivation. Yeah, all your employees say, well, yeah, that is great. We should do this. So you get more comments. 
maybe uh, some things that look a bit dry, but which are totally important, like safety, health, and environment. Uh, we had a bit less comments, but the people who comment, we know they are motivated, and maybe they will be part of the, of the team working on this. And then we measure statistics, how many comments entered, how many members or employees have commented once, more than once, and so on. Uh, and uh, so this is, this is how we did the first time. Now, we had, of course, we gathered many comments from this first iteration. Uh, we were using the, the open source application that I will show you uh, later how you can use it. So we did not develop another application this year, but we use our in-house knowledge management system. Uh, which is not based on a Google product, but doesn't matter. Anyway, it enables us to, to share knowledge between all our engineers, employees, and so on. And it is already used by all the departments in the company. Uh, so we have used this standard uh, environment this year so that people uh, do this uh, on a place where they go daily for other parts of their jobs. Uh, and we have created also the possibility for other departments. Uh, here we have IT, but we have uh, put HR, external communication, corporate planning, which is interesting because corporate planning is in charge of the creation or support to the creation of the company Hoshin, the regional Hoshin of Toyota in Europe. Uh, so to have them on board gave also many interesting discussions. And as I told you, to see that each department have done, of course, they have each their own standard. And so how, how can we have support these different, slightly different standards with a common application is also interesting. And what we have added is the possibility for people, so on top of uh, title, description, targets, leader for each item, the references, uh, everybody can make comments to others' items and everybody can like uh, or say through a comment that they don't like, which is also possible. Uh, and you can create items where you say, this guy should be the leader of this item, which is quite interesting because uh, you can give work to other people and then they have to react and say, uh, yeah, okay, I take the challenge or no, I think it shouldn't be me. And that, that generates some very interesting discussions as well. So we have done in three phases. So the first phase is we have really let everybody in the organization free to create their own topics. So, of course, we know we, we cannot have a list of more than around 10 topics. Uh, so we got 36 topics, uh, comments, users, 149 likes. So we know which topics are popular. It's not because they are popular that they are the best. So we have discussion after that. So we froze the application at some point and uh, we we chose, and that is an activity we did with indeed a more restricted team because uh, we did not bring the 150 people together to sort them out, but we could do maybe in the next phase. And sorry, I had to gray out some things about the future, uh, but uh, are they also not rocket science, but anyway, uh, company policy. And uh, uh, you see that uh, we have now 10 items and uh, after doing this, there is a fundamental step, which is to feed back to everybody who input uh, an item in the first place. We may have merged two or three different items, so we should explain to those people, thanks a lot for your collaboration, we have merged your item with somebody else's item. Or some items, and as the most delicate one, we have rejected them. So that is a coaching opportunity again. So the manager needs to go to the person and explain why the item was rejected. Uh, maybe it's not possible to do this year, but it will be relevant next year. Maybe it's done at the regional or at the global level, or maybe even it has been done already and they don't know. I mean, you can have many cases, but if you don't give the feedback, then you can be sure that next year you will have less participation and the thing will die out. <laughs> And then after uh, this restricted list of items is made, we reopen the application for comments, but then we don't challenge the items themselves, but we ask people to, to challenge the, the targets and to also start proposing their participation to some of the items. 
And this is now, exactly now, we have signed this list of 10 items on Monday before I came here. And now we are starting the process of creating what we call Hoshin strategy documents. So this is one A3 for each of those 10 items, uh, where you will have the leader explaining uh, what they want to achieve, why we do this, what is the organization, what are the milestones, and so on. And then before the fiscal year starts on the 1st of April, uh, we can have already uh, an idea of what will be the team. And imagine if you're part of a team of an item that you have proposed yourself, are you more motivated or not that when it just comes top down? Of course, you are more motivated, I imagine. <laughs> So now the open source application, if you go to www.ihoshin.org, uh, you will see the link to this application. Uh, and uh, it's not yet hosted under Google, but maybe I'll get a good offer today. <laughs> uh, it's Amazon Web Services. And uh, uh, you can, uh, the first screen you will see is not this one if you're not a user you will uh, see a screen where you can define yourself as a user and choose a, pass a password. Very simple. Uh, I put a small guide on the iroshin.org site, so you should be able to do this. Uh, and then once you're a user, this will be your first screen. So you can create a new team, a new Hoshin, can be for the, for the wedding of your daughter, or it can be for your company, or for your nonprofit organization. Uh, and uh, you have open Hoshin items, so we have created one that I will show next, which is the Lean 2040, so for the Lean community. Uh, and you have an example of a few teams where I am. Uh, so this is a research group, a research laboratory in uh, Strasbourg. Uh, this is an IT company I'm leading in Germany. And BioVitis is a bio wine fair uh, that a friend of mine is organizing every year. So you can apply to, to many different areas. I even have Planet Lean that we started with Roberto. Is Roberto there today? Uh, Roberto Priolo, he was there yesterday. Uh, but anyway, I hope he is uh, progressing this well. Uh, and uh, this is the Lean 2040 example. So each of you can say, now after these two days, I have an idea that the Lean movement should absolutely work on this item. And you can create it. And you may get a comment from Dan Jones or Jim Womack or anybody else in this room. Now, how the Nimawashi will work to retain items and eliminate others on this, uh, this is a pure experiment. But please try it out, and we'll see. So, in summary, I would like you to create Hoshin even without the application. If you're a one-person company, you can create on a piece of paper, that's fine. Uh, if you're a 50-person company in one location, probably eHoshin is an overkill. Now, if you have a distributed organization in many places, maybe it can support you. Uh, and because we have also an IT community, first year I got the comment that I talked about Lean IT, but I didn't talk about IT at all. Uh, so I put GitHub on it. You got some exp explanation from Dimitri yesterday about, uh, about GitHub. So if you go there, you can create your, your own version of the eHoshin. And if we commit it, you, you will get the, you will be the, the next uh, contributor to eHoshin. So that's a good thing. If you, if you think something is not good, well, just make it better. Don't hope I will be able to do better than you. <laughs> so uh, that's it. So here I have uh, some uh, research articles that I published linked to a number of the subjects that I explained today. But uh, we're at the end of the time, so I will skip this. And I will quote this from Peter Drucker. There's nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. Funny thing is yesterday I bought the, the book of Jess Humble. I opened it and there was exactly this quote. <laughs> so somehow it seems we are, we are aligned. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. It was very interesting. Um, I was wondering, uh, I wanted your opinion on uh, you, you've given the reference of this uh, book <laughs> from 1988. I was wondering, why do you think Oshin uh, can we is not more spread out in companies worldwide? 
first of all, I have no statistics about how spread it is or not. Yeah? Uh, but definitely because the management by objectives has been a big movement in the West, I guess that most companies have embraced this and still have it today. Yeah? Uh, now, maybe we have many discussions about is it the right thing to call something uh, with a Japanese name? Yeah? Uh, maybe that prevents adoption in countries where nobody speaks Japanese. However, we do this because it's a way to, to be very precise about what a word means. Because if you use the words in your local language, it may, it may have a totally different meaning for different people. Uh, but uh, also, it is so much linked to total quality management, quality circles, and so on. I think that still many companies are not applying those things. So basically, they don't have the underlying management system that will enable uh, Roshin Canary to flourish. Uh, so that may be also a reason. Uh, but I think it would, it would be better if more companies would do it, definitely. Catherine? Uh, I, I just wanted to say one more thing to this. Uh, at the beginning, it was called policy deployment. I don't like to use this because uh, once you have created your hosting, like I explained, then you can deploy it and you have the buy-in. But if it's just two, three people who create it and then it's just deploying, then it's the pure top-down way. This is not Toyota way. This is not lean. Yeah? So that's why I try to avoid, and it's, it's called like this on the book, but I try to avoid this wording. Um, thank you so much, Pierre. That was truly inspirational. And I, I haven't met many CIOs who write their own code. <laughs> so I, I just want to thank you for that. For the, With for some the... helps from my friend, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, so who pair program their code with um, someone. Um, I want to ask you, because it's truly inspirational, definitely I personally and we at Dan and Prestrid will create our own Hoshin and um, definitely um, test um, the application and learn from it. I want to ask, especially between your presentation and Antoine's, uh, some concepts of Hoshin reminded me the way Google does objectives and key results, or KRs, or at least what I saw on YouTube, how um, strategic goals are driven from down and kind of meet in mm -hmm. between and progress throughout the organization as something done together and like tracked in a similar way. So uh, is there any resemblance? Um, like what's the difference? But I think uh, you can think about tag time. Yeah? If we have a yearly process to create a Hoshin that takes three months every year, you can, of course, think about, well, the world is changing a lot during the year. It happens. Uh, some people tell me, oh, if something happens in August, you have to wait until April next year to change. That's not true. Yeah? When, when we had the tsunami in Japan, we changed the Hoshin completely during the year. Uh, but still, uh, this, this tag time of one year uh, may seem too long for some companies. That, that will depend in which uh, business you are, you are in. Yeah? Uh, and also for us, uh, we have very different functions in the company. When I work with marketing, uh, we try to keep the Hoshin at, uh, at a pretty high level and, and we may change direction slightly every day. Yeah? Uh, so what I didn't say, but it's very important, we have within the Hoshin, we have a lot of smaller PDCA cycles that happen during the year. And we, which are mini Hoshin, if you want, but where, of course, we will not be able to have this kind of collaborative process that takes a few weeks. Yeah? So maybe there also you need to adapt the frequency to your company. Uh, also, not only to be more short term, but also to be more long term. Yeah? Not think only about the next year, but, uh, but what is your plan for the next 50 years, for the next 100 years? Yeah? You're also a quite old company now, so I hope you... You think you will still exist in 2,100, 200, so you can think about that as well. Yeah? And that is better not to do in one day because you want to have a tag time of one day for Hoshin because reflection still takes time. Yeah? Thank you Let's very take. much. Uh, Pierre, just one question coming back to the model you showed with strong employees and, and weak employees. Maybe I, I don't didn't... like the word weak, by yeah, the way. Well, well. I, I couldn't change at the last minute, but... Uh, 
it's to the, be coached. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the question is, um, maybe I didn't catch how you did it, but is it just theory based on the experience of Lean in Toyota, or is it based on actual facts that you, no, no, you the, collected? That is the theoretical model. You know, the process is you create a theoretical model, uh, you you see the results that this theoretical model is giving, and then after actual experimentation, you modify your model to stick more to the reality. Uh, this last part, I'm still working on it, so that's why I don't show it now. It's, still, it's not the modified model. It's, it's not the modified model. But I, I am totally confident, uh, of course, in science it's very bad to say, to jump to conclusion of what the modified model will say. But I think you can all understand that if you have strong employees, they may even come up with better Hoshin items than the top management. So maybe the strong employees will, will be even, the curve will be even higher than the one uh, where top management starts. Because if top management starts, depending on the culture, maybe some employees say, oh, this top manager wants this item, so let's not touch this one, let's propose others, even if they think it's a wrong one. Yeah? So they also, we have to create the culture to, to squeeze some top management generated items that are not good enough. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Okay. Thank you.